Early space exploration was dominated by the US and Russia, with many referring to the competition between the nations as the so-called space race, which led to the American moon landing in 1969. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Decades on, the introduction of the International Space Station in the 90s marked the dawn of a new collaborative era, with Europe, Japan and Canada joining the US and Russia to run a permanent base in orbit around the Earth. Now, a new future of discovery is emerging. With Arab countries having had little presence in the field, the UAE opened a space center in 2006 and today has ambitions to become a major global player in outer space. The UAE sent its first astronaut to space in 2019 and in 2020 launched the Emirates Mars mission, which saw its Hope probe successfully arrive in the Martian orbit, collecting scientific information on the red planet's atmosphere. The Edge has been given special rare access to the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in Dubai, and I was given a guided tour by the center's Director General, His Excellency Salam Pumaid El Meri. We're in the basic, the, the clean room of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in all of our labs, so this is where we build all the satellites. Why is it called the clean room? We want to make sure everything we're manufacturing is very clean. Uh, there are no impurities, uh, uh, dust, hair, whatever it may be. And then, of course, if there are, you know, in space, those things uh, can float around and really damage your system. So that's why we build everything in this type of environment. In a sterile environment. So what is actually being manufactured inside? Yeah, so, of course, when we design a satellite, we put all the designs, we build each component, we design each component. All of that then comes to a very large cranium such as this. It all gets connected together, it all gets cabled together, and then installed in the satellite and then tested. Of course, once we close all of that, you'll see that there's uh, facilities such as uh, thermal vacuum chambers and thermal chambers where we put the whole satellite in a chamber and start you know, increasing the temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, we go down to minus 50 degrees Celsius to see uh, how the electronics will work in that type of environment because that's the environment that it will go through in actual space. And when it comes to the uh, operations inside, Talk me through the process of designing, building, and launching a satellite. How long does it take and what's involved? Yeah, so that's quite a, a difficult process. So when we look at from the idea of building a satellite, which is about 500 kilograms, up to launching, it can be about five years. So it's quite a long process. If the satellite is smaller uh, and different processes taken in terms of you know, the, the risk element, let's say, it can be two years, it can be a year. Uh, so to give an example, MBZSAT is about five years. It's a one ton, close to one ton satellite. Uh, that process, we would have to build three or four different satellites, a structural model, electronic model, uh, a QM, a qualification model, and then the flight model itself. So it takes a very long time. Uh, with our Rashid rover, it took about two years, three, uh, two and a half years. So a much quicker program because it's about 10 kilograms in size, so it's a much smaller program. And how would you say the design and build technologies have changed over the years that you've been here? I think, you know, when we look at the development of space systems, the change is quite slow in comparison to other uh, well-established businesses. But if we talk about ourselves, I think now a lot of the elements are uh, using simulation, software simulation. So rather than building a model and then putting it through rigorous testing, can you do that in software simulations? That's what I think has changed for us. You know, you look at your orbit, you look at the, the way the satellite will operate in space all through software simulations, and then try to minimize the cost of building that and testing. Down the corridor, the Director General showed me inside the Space Center's mission control room. So this is one of the, I think, most important rooms because this is really where the magic happens. So uh, all of our mission, let's say, success, you know, when that happens, you see that visually on people's faces here. So we control all of our missions from this room. Uh, you can see here we have uh, telemetry, examples of telemetry that's coming from the satellite. We look at the orbit, you know, where the satellites are, uh, and those cones there would say, you know, can we control that satellite at a certain time? Uh, we're also looking at some of the results that come from satellites. So the images that we have, the images from Mars, uh, these are the elements that we look at here. We also look at, you know, what are the next missions that are coming? So we can see when is Khalifa Sat coming? When is DMSAT coming? When is the Emirates Mars mission coming? All of that happens here. 
and make sure that you know satellites are operated correctly and the results come uh, the way we want. And there's certainly a lot happening from a technological perspective here, but talk me through some of the data that you're collecting in this room as well. Yeah, so there's a lot of important data that we get from here. So we download a lot of data that supports uh, environmental uh, monitoring. So, you know, what's the carbon like in the atmosphere? What are the PM 2.5, PM 10 particles uh, that we're breathing on a day-to-day -day basis here in Dubai? We can detect all of that from space. Uh, and of course, if you're looking at Mars or the Moon, you know, what images and what science data are we getting from Mars or Moon on those types of missions. 